Kyle Larson appears to have just proven his presumption wrong. So what happened between Kyle Larson and Ross Chastain at the Darlington Raceway on Sunday? Is Kyle Larson still of the opinion that Ross Chastain is great for NASCAR and that he might become more popular than Chase Elliott after the Darlington crash? Fans stay tuned to NASCAR Zone as we dive into today's video and see what Larson has to say about the incident. But before we dive into that, do subscribe to our channel and hit the like button. Early on in the year 2023, Ross Chastain has been aggressive with multiple drivers, including Kyle Larson, who is only one of those racers. In the first dozen races of the season, the 2021 Cup Series winner has had a few close calls with the Trackhouse Racing driver. On Sunday at Darlington Raceway, it happened again as the race was winding down and the two were running in first and second place. Both drivers lost their chance to win because of the crash and the damage it caused. The Hendrick Motorsports driver was clearly upset after the race, and fans couldn't help but wonder if he still felt the same way about the fruit farmer as he had said he did just a few days before. Ross Chastain almost knew what would happen when he raced against Kyle Larson late on Sunday at Darlington Raceway. With 14 laps left in the race, a multi-car accident caused a restart that was a quick start and stop. The two drivers were at the front of the pack and bumped into each other. During that caution, Chastain radioed his number one trackhouse racing team and asked about Larson's number five Hendrick Motorsport Chevy. Near the end of Sunday's Goodyear 400, neither Larson nor Chastain gave an inch. Their battle of wills led to a restart rhubarb with six laps left in regulation. After the two cars squeezed and scraped along the outside retaining wall, Chastain was done for the day and finished in 29th place. Larson kept going with a broken car and ended 20th, behind his teammate William Byron, who won the race. Larson said over the number five radio, what a hack, during the post-race media rounds. He declined to provide any further remark. His crew chief, Cliff Daniels, also respectfully abstained, deferring to team owner Rick Hendrick and vice chairman Jeff Gordon, who were present in the media center as representatives for Byron's victorious number 24 team. Chasting said that after being checked out and let out of the infield care center. Full commit uh, <laughs> into one, and I got really tight uh, and drove up and, and turned myself. I, I wanted to squeeze him. I wanted to, I wanted to push him up. Uh, we had been trading back and forth all day, and, and uh, I wanted to, to push him up for sure, but definitely didn't want to turn myself in the wall. How frustrated do you think Kyle's going to be with you after this one? Uh, I, well, <laughs> not, not, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm the one standing here talking to you. So, um, you know, for everybody at Worldwide Express, Unership for Global Trans, and to, to drive the big brown, big brown truck today with UPS on the hood, it was a dream come true, and, and we had a shot, and that's all we can ask for. It was Chastain's second problem of the day. At the end of stage two, he hit the outside wall and caught Martin Truex Jr., who had been in the lead for the first half of the race but had spun out of the top five. But what was more important for the number five team was that it was the second time in three races that Chastain's move caught Larson. At Dover two weeks ago, Chastain made an attempt to pass the slower car driven by Brennan Poole at the Dover Motor Speedway. But when Poole bumped into him, his number 15 Ford slid right into Larson's path, putting Larson in 32nd place. Make that three races he's taken us out of now, Chevrolet, Daniels said on the number five radio. Make that three races now he's taken us out of, Chevrolet. Good job, good job. Three races that that one car's taken well, us well. out of. Stay out unless you have a flat. Now we gotta fix the left front fender. No. Hendrick said, I don't care, and I told Chevrolet that. I don't care if he's driving a Chevrolet if he wrecks our cars. I don't care, and I've told Chevrolet that. If you wreck us, you're going to get it back. And if you don't do it, they'll run all over you. So, you know, I'm loyal to Chevrolet, but when somebody runs over us, then I expect my guys to hold their ground. And not, I'm not going to let them ask them to yield just because of the Chevrolet. But why did Larson doesn't say anything after the race? Although going down the backstretch with Chastain perched on the bonnet of his car was undoubtedly one way for Larson to express his displeasure with the circumstance. People from the media tried to talk to the driver about what happened on the pit road and at his truck, but he wouldn't say anything. Larson also made a surprising statement about Chastain just days before. But what did he say? 
On Monday, one day after Chaston hit Nola Gregson in the face with a hard right hook, the h &S driver talked about the fight in the High Limit Room show and made a surprising confession. I mean, obviously, like, I was upset with him two weeks ago, but I, I kind of love it. Like, I, I think Ross is great. I mean, he, he's, like, I mean, at this point, like, I think he is sort of, like, owning it. Like, yeah, yeah, Absolutely. like, I'm this guy, yeah. and I think he's got the potential to be more popular than Chase Elliott. So, I think it's awesome. Like, he's, you I need it. Brad you likes need to say it. he's moving the needle. What are your thoughts on Kyle Larson's comments made on Chastain before the race? Tell us in the comments section below. Be sure to hit the bell button and subscribe to our channel to get the latest updates. Talking about our winner of the day was William Byron. After enduring a string of late race restarts that saw other contenders take out one other, William Byron managed to sneak through the pack and maintain his lead during overtime to claim first place in the Goodyear 400 race that was contested at Darlington. Byron's win is the seventh of his career and his third of the 2023 season establishing a new career record for wins in a season for the Charlotte NC driver. When a caution with 18 laps left set up a series of late race restarts, Byron took advantage of two big accidents in turns one and two that happened when drivers at the front of the field crashed into each other and the outside wall. First, Martin Truex Jr. pushed Joey Logano into the wall, which caused a big accident. On the next restart, Byron snuck through while Ross Chastain and Kyle Larson crashed into each other. It was victory number 100 for the Hendrick Motorsports number 24 vehicle, which was made famous by Hall of Famer Jeff Gordon. Byron's triumph was a significant addition to the legacy of the car he drives since it marked a big milestone in the car's history. Since 2018, Byron has been driving the number 24 car. In the 2018 Winston at Charlotte Motor Speedway, he wore a throwback paint scheme that was similar to the one Gordon drove in the 1998 Winston to celebrate NASCAR's 50th anniversary. Byron told Fox Sports. Yeah, I'm just thankful um, that I was able to, you know, get in this 24 car. Um, I was, you know, too young at the time, I feel like, but, uh, you know, growing up, maturing, and just having a great team around me, being able to build the core that we have. I have a great group of guys, uh, Rudy, Brandon McSwain, Tyler, my car chief. Everybody on the team does a great job preparing good cars, and uh, we work hard at it. So it's nice to see it, you know, go our way once. Byron was presented with the opportunity to win after the races of several of the other leaders fell undone as a result of two restarts. When Ryan Newman lost control of his car and caused the caution flag to fly with 18 laps remaining, Darlington's bends, which are notoriously difficult to run side by side through while still having enough room to maneuver, would ensnare all of the day's top cars. Martin Truex Jr., who controlled the first two stages of the race, before losing track position following a spin, would be the first to fall when he went up the racetrack and hit Joey Logano, sending Logano into the wall and spinning Truex in front of traffic to cause a multi-car crash. So that is for today. Hope you enjoyed it. Tell us in the comments what you think about the video. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel to see more of our videos on NASCAR updates. Look forward to seeing you in the next video.